Why is it that Christians, Hannah, do you have a question, quick one? Okay. In chapters 34 and 38, why is it that Christian people skip chapter 34 and 38? And I just want to kind of go through the stories and see if you've ever heard sermons preached on these and why Christians skip this stuff. Chapter 34, first of all, the raping of Dinah. Chapter 34, now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, had born to Jacob, went out to visit the women of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, I call him the donkey man because that's what he means, okay? So donkey man goes out and meets Shechem, the son of donkey man, and the ruler of the area saw her. He took her and violated her. That's another way for saying what? He raped her, okay? So Dinah gets raped. Now, why is this guy Shechem, why is he really, really stupid? Do you mess with a girl who's got 12 brothers? Do you mess with a girl who's got 12 brothers? The answer is no. That's really stupid, okay? So he, but he violates her. Now what happens? When Jacob heard that his daughter Dinah had been defiled, his sons were in the fields. So Jacob, in a fury, got his sword and went out there and went after him. Is that what Jacob did? Is Jacob a man's man or is Jacob a what? What should he have done as a father? Should he have been out there first? What's Jacob do? It says Jacob here kept, his, kept quiet about it until they, the brothers, came home. Does that bother me about Jacob? I, 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 this Jacob guy, I have big problems with him. Now, when the brothers get home, question, is there going to be a problem now? The 12 brothers get home and it says the brothers were filled with grief for their sister and fury. Is the grief and fury, is that a bad combination? Okay, so the 12 brothers go out. Now what happens? Jacob tries to keep the peace a little bit. Now let me just kind of narrate the storyline. So he goes to Shechem and Hamar. He goes, he's, and they come out and say, hey, my son Shechem has fallen in love with Dinah. She want, he wants to marry her. And Jacob says, okay. Uh, but see, we're Jewish. See, we're like Jewish people, and we're like of the circumcision, and you guys are like ain't of the circumcision, the uncircumcised. And so, like... You need, to, you're, you need to go back and tell your people that they need to all be circumcised. Now, by the way, does Hamor and Shechem go back and convince the whole town to become circumcised? By the way, is that a big deal? And they said, yeah, we can intermarry with these guys. We can trade with them. They can trade with us. We'll marry their children. They can marry our children and stuff. We'll intermarry with them and stuff. They said, okay, let's be circumcised. So they convinced the whole town to be circumcised. And you remember the rest of the story. By the way, does it take all 12 brothers? No. Two. Two brothers go in, Levi and Simeon. Important, those guys are important too. Levi and Simeon, those two brothers go in and take out the whole town, just two brothers. And it says on the third day when they were still, I think the text here says, in pain. Well, obviously they're helpless and stuff, and so they're too, I, I shouldn't laugh. It's, it's, not, it's not good, okay? In other words, this is something that happened that's kind of like defiling the circumcision thing is a bad thing, okay? So anyways, this is what this storyline of Dinah. Now why, you know, the question is, why is that story in the Bible? And then you say, by the way, has anybody ever heard a sermon on that? Is that, okay, we've got one here, okay? That's interesting. All right, now you go over to Tamar, the story of Judah and Tamar, and that's in chapter 38. Let me just kind of narrate this story quickly here. First of all, background of the story, Judah had married a Canaanite woman. Is that good or bad? That's bad, okay? Judah had married a Canaanite woman, not good, okay? His son, Ur, had taken this woman, Tamar, and she was also a Canaanite and married her. What happened to Ur? His son, Judah's son, Ur, marries Tamar, and his son, Ur, dies. Now, what's the second son required to do? When the older son has died, what's the second son required to do? Marry the wife and rear children to his brother. In other words, they're not his kids. He's to rear children to his brother in honor of his brother. Okay, they call it the lever at marriage. Is that part of the culture back then? Yeah, like it or not, that's the way they did it. What happens to the second son? Onan marries her, but in the process of having sex with her, he spills his seed on the ground. God gets so hacked at Onan, God takes him out. So now, Ur married Tamar, he's dead. The second son married Tamar, and now he's dead. And you got your third son. Question, are you going to give your third son to this woman? Everyone that touches is dead. So what, no, this is serious. So Judah says, oh, you know, my son, he's just not quite ready yet. He's not quite ready yet. Tamar sees what's going on. And so Tamar then puts on the dress of prostitute. Judah, now you got to be aware of the text, Judah's wife has died. Is that significant? Judah's wife is dead. So Judah doesn't have a wife now. He's out on the road traveling. 
and he comes up, and here's Tamar, decked out like a prostitute, with her covered up, though, so he doesn't know who it is. And, and she says, well, hey, you know, what do you want, big guy and stuff? How much is it and stuff? Well, he says, you know, do you take Visa or MasterCard and stuff? She says, well, <laughs> hey, he says, I ain't got either one, man. He says, he says, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. You haven't got your changes and stuff like that. What I want from you is you got your signet ring. Now, by the way, why is this signet ring important? Is that Judah's signet ring? That's what he sticks in the mud that indicates it's him. Or as my wife would say, it's he. Okay, bam. So that's it. I want your staff and your ring, and then you go get the goat and bring it back to me. Okay. So he goes into her. She conceives actually, and then and then he goes to send the goat. And, oh, it disappeared, and he says, "Oh well, she's gone and stuff." Now a little bit later on, Tamar is found to be pregnant. My daughter-in-law, she is pregnant. Bring her out. She should be burned. She should be burned for defiling our family like that. And Tamar comes out. Hey, Judah, you recognize these? And it's like, um, 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 um. oh, well. Um, and Judah's caught. Okay, and Judah's caught. Now you say, this story's in the Bible. I mean, this is what happened. Okay, it's in the Bible. Now, is the Bible approving the story, or is it telling us history? It's telling us what happened. By the way, is Judah a big tribe of Israel? Judah is like David, okay? And as a matter of fact, Tamar, oh, yeah. In the genealogy of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 1, guess who shows up? Tamar. In the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Can you believe it? Okay, the background of the story. Now, you say, okay, Hildebrandt, what's going on? Why do why they put these stories in the Bible? <clears throat> why are these two stories in the Bible? I've got a suggestion, and what I'm going to suggest to you is that what you have here is the elimination of the older brothers. The elimination of the older brothers are whom? Okay, in the first story here, who gets eliminated? Levi and Simeon. You say, well, Reuben was the oldest. Yeah, Reuben slept with his father's concubine, so Reuben's out of the picture too. Okay, so Reuben's gone, Levi, Simeon's gone, here's Judah gone as well. And I think it's eliminating the older brothers, showing their corruption, showing the corruption of the older brothers, because who is the focus going to move to? Away from the older brothers to whom? In the end of the book of Genesis, the focus moves away from the older brothers to whom? Joseph. Is Joseph going to be a gem? Joseph is going to be a gem. Okay, Joseph and Daniel in the Old Testament, your two major winner guys, okay? And Joseph, and so I think that the text is using this as a literary technique to move you away from the older brothers to focus on Joseph, and I think that's what's going on here. Oh, focus, I shouldn't have pressed the button. Okay, focus on jo Joseph and the contrast there, by contrast of Joseph and the older brothers.